Developer season continues in the technology community. And for today, we talk about why Apple has influenced Microsoft um, to go all in on a new set of technologies after decades of using methodologies from Intel. Hey, what up? It's your boy Mob Justice back again with another video. And for today, we do get into our Microsoft Developer Conference for the year that is Microsoft Build, uh, which was held earlier this week. In particular, we're going to be focusing on uh, the company's decision uh, to go all in on what is called the ARM-based architecture when it comes to chips. As always, this uh, video is brought to you by the team over at Lion Media. Uh, head on over to check out some of the crispiest uh, photo, video, and audio content. That's www.lionmedia.com. Head on over, uh, check it out, and just see uh, what the team can do for you. As we said at the beginning, it is developer season in the world of technology. And if you caught our last video, it was around Google I.O. Uh, that is the developer conference by Google. And this week, we saw uh, the conference coming out from Microsoft. In about two weeks' time, we will be getting getting into Apple's developer conference. But for today, we're just going to be looking specifically at what the Windows Maker has in store for us. Now, because this is Microsoft build and it's geared towards developers, things get very technical very quickly. If you watch some of the videos uh, from the conference itself, you see some seven, eight hours long. Things around Microsoft's uh, cloud platform, Azure, Visual Studio, Xbox, Microsoft Teams, the metaverse, and a lot about uh, artificial intelligence. I mean, Microsoft even showed off a new feature that they have uh, that allows uh, a person to take a picture having drawn uh, a bit of a diagram on a napkin or something like that and be able to translate that into the basis um, of a structure for an app. Now, whilst all of that can be, you know, quite exciting for the more, you know, nerdy and geeky amongst us, I'm personally not a developer, but I really do think uh, that the fact that Microsoft is making investments in ARM-based architecture is a very important discussion to have. And especially when you think about Apple's investment in that very same technology. So let's recap for a moment. Exactly two years ago at its own developer conference, Apple announced its first uh, set of silicon for its own Macs called the M1. And since then, we've seen them succeed in building new chips. We've got the M1, uh, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and now we have the M1 Ultra um, with the new Mac Studio. And it succeeded in ways that made some of the more traditional chip makers, especially Intel, look a little bit old fashioned and certain circles be considered a bit of a joke. And while Apple has made its own custom silicon for a number of years, particularly for its mobile devices, um, iPhones and iPads, um, as well as Apple Watches, Apple TV, etc. It was when they came out with the M1 um, on the laptop and computing side that people really, really started to take them seriously, um, just how much they had learned in terms of building their own chips. And now we've seen a scramble from the likes of Intel itself, um, Google, Samsung, and now Microsoft in terms of either making their own chips or at least uh, trying to support new architectures architectures, particularly around ARM. And all this comes as Apple is expected to make an announcement around the second generation of its uh, Apple Silicon, and that is uh, the M2. Before we go too far, a little bit of background and context is needed. The conversation isn't necessarily about Microsoft making its own chips, but rather shifting the way that developers can approach its platforms, you know, making it so that it supports um, a relatively new standard called ARM, as opposed to an old standard made by Intel called x86. x86 um, is a set of instructions, you know, that helps processors to do what they do 
and it uh, prioritizes peak performance whereas arm based chips um, which have become quite prevalent in your mobile devices over the last decade or so um, prioritizes power efficiency and it's upon that architecture that apple actually went and made its silicon because they had been making all of these arm based chips uh, for the iphone for the ipad for all of those years and now we see that we're likely on the cusp of a big shift uh, towards arm on the side of Windows because of the investment that Microsoft is making. And one could argue that the performance of Apple's M1 has actually precipitated all of this right now. One key comment that came out from Microsoft CEO uh, Satya Nadella is that they see Windows operating on systems that have integrated uh, processes, that is your CPU graphics, that is the GPU, as well as a neural engine of some sort. We're entering a world where every Windows computer will draw on the combined power of CPUs, GPUs, NPUs, and even a new core processor, Azure Compute. And that harkens back to the way that Apple's M1 is designed. It's a SOC or a system on a chip. And basically you have all of those components being on one uh, particular system. If you've ever opened up a Windows machine or built a custom PC, then you will know that these pieces tend to be different. But there's this movement towards an integration in the way that we see um, the same happening on your mobile devices. And that little comment is enough for one to speak speculate that either Microsoft is planning to make its own uh, custom silicon or that they are working with a company like Intel to develop SOCs of that nature. The other piece of the equation is that Microsoft is now allowing developers to use the same code base for x86 and have that uh, translated almost automatically uh, for ARM-based architecture. And that's quite similar to what we are currently seeing on the Apple side. Um, developers can actually develop something and it can be translated and used on both Intel Macs as well as your M1 Macs using a system that they call Rosetta. To make all of this happen, Microsoft announced a new set of hardware called Project Volterra. It sort of looks like uh, a Mac mini, uh, but sort of Microsoft's answer to that. And if you think about it on the Apple side, when they do developer kits, now they tend to be of the Mac mini variety. But these ones are pretty cool because you can stack one on top of the other and they will work in unison. Now, as we said, there were a lot of announcements that were made this week, uh, but uh, three other ones that stood out to me outside of uh, this x86 versus ARM debate is the fact that Android support has been increased in terms of uh, development natively. Uh, there's no longer a need to use emulators. And then at the same time, uh, more integration with the Amazon uh, App Store. And then the second one is the fact that uh, we saw a lot of features coming out uh, from the Windows 11 side, you know, really keen to see those, you know, coming to the fore. And then the third one is the fact that, you know, on the Microsoft team side, this stuck out to me, uh, the fact that they've released a new set of collaboration tools, you know, that will allow people to interact with each other. You're on teams, but perhaps you're working on a project all at the same time that you can see. We often see presentation tools inside things like Teams, but now they're enhancing that capability a little bit more. So in conclusion, three things. Firstly, I'm really glad to see that we are seeing more and more of uh, these chip ecosystems coming to the fore. I think it's going to do a lot for innovation and development. But more importantly, uh, on a second point is that Microsoft is involved because at the end of the day, when it comes to the world of personal computing, they are still the biggest player in the game when it comes to um, the Windows operating system. So their endorsement of ARM architecture really uh, will go a long way to making ARM, you know, more of a standard um, in the future, especially when one thinks about, you know, their market share. But also at the same time, um, the 
they are probably well placed um, to do the most because the third biggest issue is the fact that optimization at the moment really seems to be the name of the game. When one looks at the types of optimization that Apple has been able to make through its M1 range of chips, um, then it's understandable why uh, a company like Microsoft and actually doing these integrations will really be good because it means that they can control a little bit more just around how uh, the different chips actually behave because that's the difference between Windows and uh, the Mac ecosystem. The fact that Windows needs to run on a variety um, of machines around the world, you know, from, you know, low RAM to high RAM, you know, um, SSDs, HDDs, you know, all of these different variations, whereas on Apple side, they get to control so many different components. And perhaps because Microsoft does have its own line of devices, the Surface line, we might see some of that integration, you know, coming in a little bit more and actually working to make that line of machines a little bit more powerful. So that's been it. You can let us know what you think. You know, was it a little bit too geeky, a little bit too nerdy? Do you even care uh, the fact that there is something called x86 and this arm? Or do you sort of support the fact that a move like this does show uh, that the arm architecture is going to be more widely supported from this point forward you guys can let me know what you think and i'll catch you guys in the next video hey this is baby g and you're watching the mob justice channel follow us on twitter instagram and facebook live it love it like it this is the mob justice tv